and welcome to The Porch with Alicia Barlow. Hi, I'm Alicia Barlow, author of The Porch, a place for enjoyment, conversation with people, reflection, and encouragement. Hi, this is Alicia. Haven't been in the studio for a while, but I am here today with Mr. Tony Washington. Tony Washington, did I say that correctly? Yes. Okay, great. He is the chapter president here in Oklahoma of the Buffalo Soldiers. I met Mr. Washington when I was in Lawton at a convention, and the the chapter was there, and they opened up the convention for this particular group of people, and I tell you, it was just very enlightening to hear them speak to the people that were there in attendance, talking about the Buffalo Soldiers and who they are and what the Buffalo Soldiers did. I just wanted to bring him in and have him to kind of talk to me and the audience here about, you know, the history of the Buffalo Soldiers. Tell me about yourself a little bit, Mr. Washington. You're, you're living in Lawton, Oklahoma yes. at this time, but you're not from Oklahoma. No, I'm actually from uh, Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. And that's where I was born and raised, and that's, and right out of high school is when I joined the military. Okay. And so, and then you ended up in Oklahoma uh, at the end of your career? Yeah, uh, that's where I decided to retire, and I settled down there. Okay. All right. So how long have you been living here in Oklahoma? About 22 years now. Oh, okay. All right, then. Well, I guess you are an Okie. You know, that much time. We'll claim you. Well, tell me, you are uh, the president of the Oklahoma chapter of the Buffalo Soldiers, for those who may not know who the Buffalo Soldiers are, kind of tell us about the Buffalo Soldiers. Well, the Buffalo Soldiers uh, started off as just regular um, colored troops before during the Civil War. Then after the Civil War, they were pretty much put back as slaves. But after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, these guys are now actually even though on paper they were free slaves, but they couldn't find any kind of occupation or they didn't have skills. So they was looking to be able to have the opportunities to prove themselves that they are uh, just as equal as anyone else and they need to be or should be treated like humans like anyone else. Okay. And all they wanted is the opportunity to show what they can do if given that uh, opportunity to do that. So uh, at this time... The 39th Congress back in 1866 decided to provide, uh, does, to approve um, the formation of colored uh, soldiers at the time because they were not originally Buffalo soldiers. They were just called colored soldiers, okay. which was four regiments of infantry, which was the 38th, 39th, and 40, 41, and two cavalry units with 9th and 10th in which who we represent in Lawton Fort Sill. So with that, it was some reluctance to do that. You know, not everybody thought slaves can actually be soldiers. So they really didn't have the confidence that they really can do the job. But they formed it, but the way they formed it is they have those regiments, but they will only be commanded by white soldiers, okay. white officers. So what, what, where, where was the original um, formation set? Where, what? What area? What state? Well, um, the ninth was established in Louisiana. Okay. In 1866, and the tenth was established in Fort Leavenworth, in uh, 1866. That that I do know about the calf units, and then the people were merging from different areas to try to go there to work, to be uh, to join the military, because at that time they was offering thirteen dollars a month which is $13 more than they was getting during okay, that time. Okay. You know, a, a place to sleep, health care, and a pension. So that was the incentive for those guys to uh, join. And, you know, they was pretty much looking for work, period. So if they were able, they, they would travel to the sign up to enlist at that time. Okay. Okay. And so what was their initial um, commands or their uh, the initial um job that the soldiers were supposed to be doing, and then how did they become known as the Buffalo Soldiers? Well, initially they were pretty much a labor force at that time because they was helped building railroads, 
garden stage hosts erecting telegraph poles and uh, building roads and outposts, mostly a labor. But then they started using them as protecting the southwest as people were moving south. And then they had they didn't have much lawness, law, lawlessness or control as far as people establishing land, you know, settling land. Okay, so there's a lot of fighting and going on. Yeah, and, so. and they were more like a peacekeeping okay. group at that time to settle arguments, and, and they knew how they, to uh, lay out the land and know how to stake out land. So they were used on that and also to protect, you know, bandits and any hostile uh, outlaws, cattle rustlers, and some of the uh, hostile natives. So they were actually, like, capturing cattle rustlers and um, trying to ward off thieves and to protect the settlers. Right. Okay. All right. And protect the settlers from themselves because they had disputes on property also. Oh, okay. So okay. they had to try to settle those. And it was interesting because they were using the Buffalo soldiers to do that because these guys, they were pretty much friends with each other, so... Let the Buffalo Soldiers settle that. Oh. <laughs> so if anybody get angry, they get angry at them. So that's why they became known as some of the peacemakers. Right, during that time. Okay. Yes. And they got their name from um, several engagements with Native Americans during okay. that time. They were giving them that name because of how they looked with the woolly hairs and the dark eyes and uh, some of the skin, uh, the Buffalo skins that they wore during the wintertime mm. as coats. Okay. But... Also, they were given that because they was looking at their fierce fighting ability on the battlefield. Okay. They, they, it reminded them of the buffalo because a buffalo is like sacred to the uh, natives. Okay. And they, uh, it just reminded them the way we look and how we fight on the battlefield. So it was a name of honor. That, right. That, that, we that, 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 took it as much, yes. Okay. Because we didn't understand when we first heard that. Like, hey, what they mean by that buffalo soldiers? Okay. <laughs> But then when they got a better understanding, then it starts spreading out that, hey, we can embrace this, you know. Right. Because that's what we were. That's what we had to do anyway. We had to prove that we can fight. Yeah. Because there was not a lot of confidence in what we can do. And, 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 and history has shown that we can do anything. If, if given the chance, we anything. can. The same anything. opportunity as anyone else, just give us that same opportunity and we can show that we can do and we can do better. Yes. Yes. So I, I think that's interesting that the um, settlers and um, the people at that time utilized those men as peacekeepers. You know, you think about that now, you know, right. they, they look to them for peace. <laughs> they yeah, look to the them same. for protection. They look for them for laying out so many things. That, wow. And at the same time, they still couldn't stand them. <laughs> exactly. So they had to... Watch out for the same people that they're protecting. They had to protect themselves from them because a lot of people did not believe in their ability to do what they, um, to tell them what to do, to handle disputes and all that. They, they didn't really want to grasp that. How, was there, how, how would you say that the relationship was with the Buffalo Soldiers and the Native Americans? I mean, how was that relationship with them? Even though, you know, the Native Americans gave them the name of the Buffalo Soldiers, was there a conflict? between them, or was there an embracement, or what What would you say? You had some hostile uh, natives, but you also had some that were not hostile. And sometimes we had to protect them from each other. Okay. Some tribes did not agree with other tribes being, you know, not hostile. You know, pretty much they just fighting for their land and fighting for what's theirs. Yes. But our job is to bring out peace amongst them. But if it has to be hostility, then it has to be, because... You know, we're in, we're in battle, so, okay. you know, we had no choice but to do what yeah, we— They had a job to orders. do. Yes, and sometimes we have to displace them, move them from one location to another location. So how how long did the um, era of being Buffalo Soldiers, you know, it started in 1866 to when? To—most would say 1944, because oh. that's when the military started being integrated at that time. okay. But actually, it's 1951, 52, when it really happened, because you still had uh, cavalry soldiers being separated. Okay. It didn't really take effect. It was brought out in uh, 
approved in 1944, but it just didn't all of a sudden happen right then okay. and there. But as far as the Buffalo Soldiers, they start being integrated to other units, spread them out, you know, because we were no longer going with horses. We was relying on mechanicals at that time. Okay. Tanks and vehicles. We were moving up, so they started dispersing them during that time. Okay. Wow. Great, great. After disbursement and everything, when did um, chapters start becoming? Um... Uh, pretty much, uh, I think it I believe 1996, 1966, they had some old um, cavalry guys that wanted to establish a chapter, okay. and they wanted to bring it out throughout the states. Okay. So they got together and started at that point, and then they started growing from state and different states and different locations. And some states even had more than two chapters, more than one chapter. So what is the history of having the Buffalo Soldiers here in Oklahoma? They have a a very significant history here because they actually built Fort Sill. When they were here, we got here, they was established in 1866, they got here in 1867, and it was named Fort Sill in 1869 after they accomplished building the barracks and a place to stay and an outpost. It was a prison camp and then it was a camp for cavalry or the, the soldiers itself, all the troops, at that time, but they actually built it during that time. There was their blood, sweat, and tears that built That built Fort Sill. Yes. Wow. And so um, I know that I was talking with you, and there is a, correct me on this, is there a statue in Fort Sill, or is there some type of memorial in Fort Sill on 2nd Street that recognizes the Buffalo soldiers? What What is what is There's that? a statue there. There is a statue. Yes, of a Buffalo soldier and a little inscription on the bottom of about the Buffalo Soldiers. Okay. Sitting right there on 2nd Street in uh, Gore, 2nd and Gore. Okay, is that kind of downtown Lawton, or Yeah, was it's that? pretty much down in the downtown area, about a couple of blocks from the mall Okay. Down there. So, okay. It's, yeah, it's in that vicinity that is highly populated at times. Okay. And, and what, what are some other recognitions um, for the Buffalo Soldiers that are down in Lawton? I was reading, is there some type of area in a museum that kind of... Yeah, they have a Recognize. museum on post, but at this time, I don't know if they have all the replicas or the items that they used during that time because they was doing construction. So we don't know what stayed or what they moved to another location. Okay, all right. And there is a, a little monument there on Fort Sill also from uh, <clears throat> Henry O. Flipper, which was the first African-American to graduate from West Point. Oh. That was his first duty station was Fort Sill. Oh, okay. And with his education, he engineered a sewage that prevented malaria from spreading, and he saved a lot of lives and saved a lot of um, people from being ill from it. And by him making designing that, they uh, they called that Flipper's Ditch. They gave it a name. Flipper's Ditch. What, what was his name again? Henry O. Flipper. He was a second lieutenant that graduated from uh, West Point. He wasn't the first one to attend. He was the first one to graduate. Okay. Henry O. Flipper. Okay. Another. Yeah, memory. that's one of uh, very important. And that's one of the real significance of Fort Sill. And, and that's why we, one of the reasons why we wanted to establish a chapter there. Okay. Because of so much history with the Buffalo Soldiers right there. And we're the only, right now, we're the only chapter in the state of Oklahoma. Has there ever been more than one chapter in Oklahoma or just just the one? No, we, we were the only one. The only one? Okay. But we was open to expand to help if anyone wants to expand uh, to start their own chapter. Okay. You know, and they can do that. Okay. All right. We'll, t we'll talk about how, how that's done. Um, now, you were telling me about some other um, monuments or dedications that are coming up to recognize the Buffalo Soldiers. Now, is there? You said there's a housing area. Tell me about the housing area. Yes, it was a it's a housing area that used to be a golf course on Fort Sill, but they made it a whole new housing area for the soldiers and their families. But they named it after the Buffalo Soldiers, based on the history of the Buffalo Soldiers with Fort Sill. Okay, that was in recognition, and they wanted to dedicate it that to the Buffalo Soldiers. And so, what is the name of the housing area? It's Buffalo Soldiers Acres. 
Buffalo Soldiers Acres. Yes. And how many housing, does, are these individual houses or is it, or is it an apartment for the soldiers or military? What What exactly? Homes actually look like homes, like uh, duplexes and different types of homes okay. all in this one uh, area. That's why they call it the Acres because they all in one in this one area. Okay. Okay. Wow. So that's nice. That's nice. Buffalo Soldiers Acres. Um, next time I'm in Lawton, I'm going to have to kind of check some of these things out because I didn't know about all this, you yes. know, and this, this mm. is very, very interesting. And we have another dedication that's coming up on the 25th of this month. 25th of this month. They're going to dedicate the track that surrounds that whole Buffalo Soldier Acres. Uh-huh. It's a three-mile track that people, you know, walk and they can run, you know, you're off-duty or living in the house and they uh, walk their kids on strollers around that track. Okay. Now, that's going to be named after the Buffalo Soldiers now. And what will that name be? It's going to be Buffalo Soldiers Trail. Buffalo Soldiers Trail. And is all this around the military base? Yes, it's inside. It's all inside yeah. the military base. Inside Fort Sill. Okay. The installation. Well, that is, that's, that's, that's really, I think that's a hidden secret for one. <laughs> I don't know that, you know, I, I didn't know about it. I don't know if there's a lot of people in Oklahoma that do know the significance of the work of the Buffalo Soldiers here in Oklahoma and how they are honored and recognized in Fort Sill. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that actually was born and raised there that don't know. That's why one of the things that we do as a chapter, we go around and educate. You know, we go to schools, we go to churches, we go to events, and we uh, use that time to educate the people on the uh, history of the Buffalo Soldiers and what we do within the community. Okay. And so other than educating, and which is a lot, um, communities about the Buffalo Soldiers, what are some other community um, things that you all do? Oh, well, we have, uh, we established, we always established the, uh, we had a, a scholarship program for the uh, local high schools in Lawton. Okay. And we have been doing that since our chapter was established in 1996. And we've been doing that. So that's something we strongly believe in, uh, the scholarship program that we have. So it's just for high schools in, all, yeah, in Lawton? high school seniors, yeah, in our in local Lawton. area. Okay, okay. Because, you know, there's a lot of students that, I always try to tell people, you know, about scholarships. I don't know anybody in Lawton, but I know some kids here in Oklahoma City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we try to keep it local because, of, you know, we're not that large to expand that way. Okay, So okay. Um, we want to look out for these seniors and make sure they're on the right path. That's great. That's great. All right. And we also, we uh, donate a trike bike to a special needs child every year. Okay. This is one of the... Th- three things that we do, and we have a, a Christmas um, program for needy families that we do between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. We have um, boxes put together with turkey and all the fixings in it. And what we do is designate a member, every member of our chapter will find a family okay. to uh, make sure they get that. And that's how we... Uh, we, we feel better doing that way than having a whole drive for a whole community and wind up can't support the whole community. Yeah. We, yeah. we saw it in cases that people wait in line and wait in line and wait in line, and then well, they, they get, get up, up there, there it's all You're gone, out. or you're just getting what's left. Okay. So this way, if we designate a family, we make sure that family gets it. That's Whether good. Whether they can make it or not, we will make sure they get it. Okay, all right. And it's a minimum of a, of a family of four. So Okay. Regardless of the size, if they less than that, we everybody get the same thing in the boxes that we put together. Okay, all right then. And you said that each member is designates a family. How many members are in the chapter in Lawton? And do you have to live in Lawton to be a part of the chapter? No, because we have members that were in Lawton that relocated elsewhere. Okay, but they still remain members. Okay, because they you know believe in what we are doing and they still support it. Okay. So yes, they are outside, somewhere outside of, outside of Lawton and outside of Oklahoma. Okay, all right. And you currently have how many um, active members? We have close to forty active, and to include uh, honorary members. So we have about ten honorary members. So we have like thirty active. So yeah, we um, 
try to get all together. We meet once a month, and we talk about some things that we plan on doing, or do we just uh, stay the course and just let everybody know what's going on? That's to keep everybody abreast of what's going on. Okay, okay. For this this ded- dedication that you all have that's coming up the 25th of this month, um, how are you getting the word out about the dedication? I mean, I think this is a, a great thing to do. Yeah, we have. They have flyers. They have a Facebook page. We even have a Facebook page okay. that we had the flyer put on there. What is what is your Facebook page? Oh, Law Enforcement Seal Buffalo Soldiers. Law and Seal Buffalo, Buffalo Soldiers. Soldiers. Yeah. And I try to put as much information on there. Everything that we do, I try to put on there. Anything that we'd be involved in, I try to put on there. Just so they can see what we're doing. Instead of always hearing, they can actually see what we're doing. And that's like. That's why we do what we do. We want our actions to speak for us. Yes. You know? And also, we, we are part of the Meals and Wheels program. We join with another group that's doing that. So we help out with the community on their efforts also. Okay. You know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, you know, uh, this sounds like some newsworthy information to me. Being Black History Month, have you all ever tried to reach out to the news media to say, hey, you know, this Black History Month, we've got some some real good, um, interesting black history regarding the Buffalo Soldiers here in Oklahoma. we got a dedication that's going on, that will be going on the 25th of this month. We'd like for that to be mentioned in your news media. It's something that, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's what we talked about in our meeting today. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we had someone that's uh, going to address that to the uh, media and try to set up a schedule, a time to uh, get that out. Oh, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. And what time is the dedication if some, if anybody wants to, you know, come down there to participate in it? It starts at 8.30 because there's going to be a run involved, a run walk that's going to be involved going around that whole track. Okay. So three, the that's dedication. three miles. Okay. Well, that's, that's a pretty good yeah. pretty good little walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you'd be surprised. I mean, people that does it yeah. and people that look forward to doing it. Okay. So um, they're going to be... It's going to start, the run is going to start at 9, but they're going to have the dedication, all the formalities starting at 8.30. Okay. So they can be done by 9 o'clock so they can have the unveiling of the, the sign that's going to say Buffalo Soldier Trail, and then they're going to start the, the run walk at that time. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds great. Now, that's the 25th. I'm guessing that's going to be on a Saturday. Yes. All right. I'll have to look at my calendar. <laughs> I may have to try to make it down there yeah. to participate in that. All right. So how did you become a member of the Buffalo Soldiers, and what what drew you to decide to join? Uh, I had looked at what they were doing in the community, and I wanted to do something. uh, If I'm going to join any organization or any club, I wanted to see what they were doing for the community. Me, myself, I just don't like to join just to be joining or join just because a friend of mine joined. Yes. I want to see what they're actually doing with the community as me being a member and how I can contribute. Okay. You know, to the to the chapter for say or and to the community at the same time. Cuz I was doing a lot of volunteering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh boy, I just dedicated my life to volunteering after I retired. Okay. All right. All right. So, um and you've been president of this chapter for how long? I'm in my third year now. Oh, okay. All right, then. (laughs) So I just started, really. (laughs) All right. Well, let me ask you this. If someone is interested in becoming a member of the chapter, well, let me ask this first. How many chapters are there nationally? We have close to 41 chapters. Oh, wow. Throughout the United States. Okay. And some states have about three chapters in within that state. Okay. So this is... Oh, yeah. This is huge. You know, this is, you know, just not... Yeah, Some just small. not like uh, a, a little chapter here and a chapter there, yeah. and they only and they only do their own thing. We meet every year. We have our own reunion that we meet every year. Wow! And this year we hosted it this year, okay. but we had to do it virtually because of the concerns of COVID and okay. travel concerns. But we still made it happen. Okay. But we try to do this every year at a different location. Oh wow, that's interesting. So next year it'd be in Houston. Oh, oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> That'd well, be this nice. year, I okay, yeah. okay, all right. So, what are the criteria to join um, to be a part of the organization? Well, the bottom line is you being a good, upstanding citizen. A lot of people think you have to be prime military or you have to have a relative that was in the military, but no, 
just be a good upstanding citizen that's willing to do you know do things in the community to support the community okay so it's not and some people think it's um we don't have women in there but we have women also okay because there was a woman as a buffalo soldier okay all right she's matter of fact she's the only woman to only female to actually enlist in the military okay so at in, the time yeah, well, p- period, because it was they didn't win, they didn't allow women to yeah. be a part of. It. Now they helped out on the battlefield, you know, passport out and on. But she actually enlisted. But the way she did it, she disguised herself as a man. Mm. Mm. Would and, you happen to know what her name? Yeah, Kathy what? Williams. Kathy Williams. Her name is Kathy Williams, but when she enlisted, she did Williams Kathy. Oh, all right. I have to look that up. Kathy Williams. Yeah, and she did very well. And she was in the infantry unit. Okay. So she... Oh, so she was on the ground. She handled herself, yeah. She (laughs) handled herself very well. And only two people knew was a a boyfriend and a relative. Okay. You know, the command did not know about it. Because they were so desperate to get people to sign. And she was kind of tall and kind of big. So they just automatically... um, Sign up because that lets you know it wasn't much done as a physical. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> else they would have found out from the start. Okay, all right. But she was in almost two years before they found out she was female. Okay, and that's because she got sick. Okay, so just be an outstanding citizen, upstanding c- citizen, someone yeah. who wants to go out and do something in the community positive. Right, you can be male or female, and you don't have to be um, associated with the military. Yeah, military affiliated. No, okay. You don't. To be a Buffalo Soldier. To be in our chapter, yes. To, or to be in any chapter. Any chapter of the Buffalo Soldiers. Yes. Wow. This was great. Thank you so much for coming and speaking with me and talking to me and letting me and other people know about the the history of the Buffalo Soldiers and what the chapters are doing currently as Buffalo Soldiers. I appreciate your time. Hey, it was a pleasure and an honor to be here during this time. Thank you for listening and joining me on the porch. Remember to take time to reflect, share memories, and engage with others on your porch. And I'll meet you here next time on The Porch, your podcast for community conversations. Brought to you by the Possibilities Podcast Platform.